is today marked our, our last chance to get on that field as a, in a practice type setting to get ready for our first game. And, uh, uh, and uh, I guess they say there's, you know, there's never enough time to do everything you need to do, but we sure have covered as much as we can. But it's game week. We're excited. I think we're ready to go in the game week uh, uh, for UCF. Um, in, in that I mean we are, we've done as much as we can. We prepare as well as we can prepare. And the players are mentally ready to play. Uh, whether that uh, whether we can match up with a team as talented as UCF, uh, a team pre uh, uh, predicted to win their conference, and a team that returns a top 10 defense and is very talented people, whether we can match up is another saying. But we are going to be ready to play football uh, and look forward to this uh, to this game. Uh, why don't I just open it up for questions and get moving, and we'll go direction any direction you want to go. Coach, what do you feel best about, and what are you most concerned about? Uh, just one, one, I feel best about the attitude of our football team. The the mental attitude, I believe, will be will, will be what we would expect it to be. The players will have will know they're prepared. They will be enthusiastic about playing the game, as much as we can all predict. They will be confident. You know, they're they're going to you, you believe there's going to be some confidence in just believing that they play their best. That some good things are going to happen. Uh, and so I think that's the the attitude of the team, the preparation the coaches have given them. The negative is is the is just knowing how good Central Florida has a chance to be. You know, you can talk. You know, with the talent level, uh, would have to swing in their favor. You know, if I'd been at here eight years and and we had had all the players everywhere and and everything had been, then I think you, you have a chance to even it up. But I think, as everyone would reasonably expect, their talent level will be the one thing that just it is what it is, and we're going to deal with it when we see it. You know, the MAC conference. Uh, Although our conference prides itself in being in being a, a a giant killer, it's always a Big Ten school here or something there. Uh, uh, we've got to go from where, the bottom of the conference and get our way up, you know. So, but the difficult thing I was trying to say is that you open up with usually the toughest part of your schedule is your first three or four games uh, when you play these big these some of these schools, and uh, uh, I think Central Florida will be a, will be a um, uh, one of those type schools. Can you talk about what you want to do with your roster in terms of uh, two being, hey, we want to play, do you want to play your black backup quarter? Uh -huh. Do you want to get your tailback X number of yeah. snaps? Is there somebody else you want to get right. on the field for? Yeah, you know, and, and, and all I would say this, I very seldom in my career, and I've probably something that was taught to me down from, from family or somewhere earlier in my day, is that I don't do a lot of thinking about what we need to build for tomorrow or today. The most important time is now, and the most important time to, to be our best is now. I have a hard time telling my, telling my coaches to make sure their second team guy gets in the second series because I don't know whether that second series is the most important series of the game. And if my first teamer is one little bit better than the second one, I want him playing. So I would say this, we have no plans to prepare for down the road. We, we've, got, we've, we've tried to find the very best at each position. We're going to try to play that person as long as he can be the best at that position. Now, as you know, defensively, they'll say we've got to have eight plays, then two plays of defense. Or, you know, there's got to be leg savers and people that run, you've got to run a lot further. So there'll be, there'll be seconds playing in a lot of positions, but most of it will all still be based on the very best person is playing every single play of the game because we don't know where we've we got to win a game or two. or so we, gotta, we don't know where, where it's going to come. So, and, and there have been other people that have said that. We're going to make sure we get ready for next year. You know, six games into the season, you're 0 and 6, and you got to build or something like that. And, but there's no indicate, none of that at all. None of that at all. We, uh, uh, our quarterbacks have been very tight, close throughout the preseason, and we like, we really like our backup quarterback. But if my starter has a good game and we and he needs to be in there, he'll play the whole game. Can you talk about Dalton, coach? Uh, how does he fit into the offense, and yeah. how is he getting ready for, for Thursday night? Dalton Dalton Williams has been a, a, a real uh, a godsend in the sense that he took a risk coming here, knowing that when I when he chose to come here as a fifth year senior, and I told him, you know, if it's close, I'm playing the young guy. I can't I can't build I can't go down the road with with the guy that's going to be gone and start over again next year. So if it's even, I'm going to play the young guy. But he he responded perfectly. He did stayed. He, go ahead. Did he play any of the spread at? Yeah, yeah, he played a very similar. That was one of the reasons he played a very similar style of offense, you know. 
uh, very similar style. And he grew up in seven on sevens all his life in, in Texas. He's just been a seven on seven guy that had a lot of experience. And we had we had mutual friends uh, that had coached him while he was there at, at Stephen F. Austin. And I knew everything about him for the last three or four years. And again, the, 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 he was going to transfer and play for us at North Alabama. He had been a, I'll tell you where his, his background was, because I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great story. He, he went to Stephen F. Uh, and, and backed up a quarterback named Jeremy Moses. Jeremy Moses was a three-year starter and won the, the Walter Payton Award as the outstanding player in all of Division I. So for three years, he backs him up. And Jeremy became to be my GA at North Alabama. And so Jeremy kept saying, if you get a chance next year, and what happened when Jeremy left, the coaching changed, and the, the new coach decided to play a young guy, not the old fifth-year guy. So here he was, a fifth-year guy who waited his term, and Jerry even said, you know what, if this guy would have come in one year ahead of me, I bet you I would have set the bench for three years. And now this guy was pretty good. And so, but he was stuck, you know, kind of in a situation. So, I, so we were, he was going to come play for me at North Alabama. And when I left, I didn't ever call him back because I figured that's it. And then he called me and said, I want to go play. The, the, the new guy out in North Alabama runs an option. Yeah. And so uh, he called me back, and I said, then I said, I tried to be honest with him. I said, listen, I, we've got to build a different situation here, the division, North Alabama Division Two. If, I, if, you, if you're even, I'm not going to give you just – you need to go somewhere and start because it's your fifth year and you want to go somewhere where you can have the kind of uh, success in your career. You have the kind of finish that you would like to have. I like all guys to, to be able to fulfill their dreams. I said, don't come up – this is not the place to come like North Alabama because I'm going to play the other guy if, he's, if it's even. He came in, did a great job, fought it, took over, showed leadership every day, was very easy – was earned his respect from the other players, tried to lead every drill in the offseason. And he runs our offense very, very well. For those that have watched practice, he, he's very efficient running our offense and managing it. And he, and, and he clearly earned it. Because like I said, if it was even, I'd probably gone with a redshirt freshman and gone that route. But, uh, so, and, and so I'm very pleased. I, do, I, I, I believe, he's a, I believe uh, I'm very comfortable with him at that position. Coach, you've, you've been through this profession all your life. Mm -hmm. What's it going to feel like for you on Thursday night leading your team out of that Locker room mm -hmm. out onto Info Station Stadium. Do you still get that that butterfly in your stomach? Mm -hmm. Do you still get the, the that tingling type feeling? It's ready. Let's go. Let's go. Kick off and play football. <laughs> I get the butterflies. I, I get sick to my stomach. Uh, <laughs> nauseous, sick, anxious before yeah. a game. You know, Bear Bryant, the old Southern coach, would throw up before a game, and I think hundreds of coaches have thrown up just so they could act like Bear Bryant <laughs> before games. But I know I've heard coaches talk about it, but it, that, I don't throw that far, but I get anxious. Yeah. You know, Philippians 4, 6 is what I've been telling my players, not that we're into a Sunday school class, but, you know, don't be anxious. You know, about tomorrow, it take care of itself, you know. Um, but, no, I, I, I get real excited. You know, you say I've been coaching all my life. I couldn't hardly – get a job three years ago because I'd been out all my life, you know, not coaching. Everybody thought, it's kind of funny how perspective plays a different role. Uh, though, you know, I think part of having been out and having been division, this is, it's, I'm real excited. This is, I mean, I'm, this, you know, it's not the biggest arena in the, in the country, but it's the big arena. You know, Division One's the big arena. And, I, and I've got a bunch of guys that I'm, I'm really proud of and enjoying. So I am, uh, I'm very excited slash anxious. How will it be any different from you, or will it be any different What's that? Coming out here Thursday night. No, no, I, I, no, I, no. It'll be, it'll be no different. I, I think there's, like, there's plenty of room for. Uh, I think most of the times I come, I've come to in a program, and um, uh, they, they've had a tough year before, and you're wondering how you're going to perform. You know, how well is, is it going to, is it, how long is going to take us to get where we want to go, uh, and, uh, um, and uh, because that's easier talked about and sold than done, and. Um, so um, uh, I, I do think uh, this is kind of like most of the situations I've come into with it. The, the nervousness is even more than just being your normal game. It's it's not knowing, how, knowing, uh, not knowing exactly how far you got to come, and uh, um, and going out there and getting tested pretty tough. You know, the first game. Is it tougher to completely reshape a program like you inherited here, or is it tougher to go into a 500 situation where you got a piece here or a piece there that you don't have. No, you know what? I mean, the toughest was what I went to in North Alabama. It was it was tough. I, North Alabama was a very tough experience. I mean, they had won playoffs six straight years in a state that takes its football very seriously. I mean, we only had – it was Division two, But we averaged 11,000 people a game, and tailgating was as big as any Division one school and all the whole thing. So I go – 
and all of a sudden I'm, my name comes in all that that uh, so all that uh, excitement from from me going into a Division II program and the guys they won 11 games the year before you know and they graduated every single offensive player and so I, I think taking over a program that's on top and having to keep it there and not go backwards was the most difficult. Now you're comparing now when the team is kind of five and six-ish and iffy, iffy. I think that probably would be next in line as to, well, how, where do we go from here? I can remember at Auburn, and I hate for this press conference to be about me. I'd like it to be more about my players. That's what I'm talking about. I'll answer your questions. Uh, I remember at Auburn, my goal was, my private inside voice goal was to, I got to find a way to win six. They'd gone five and six and five, five and one. And I said, man, I've got to find a way to win six. If I could just win six, I would win more than the, the last guy was a pretty famous coach. I said, so you, you, every, everything has its inside things that you know you got to get to and you get nervous about and anxious about. But, but right now our players, I, I, uh, the, they, they want to win. And I think, and I, you know, I have, I, I've been reading goal sheets all week. I won't re relay those to you because I keep them private. Every player has his athletic goals, his academic goals. But I know what their athletic goals are, and they're, they're pretty high. They're pretty high. Can you talk about any injuries coming into the Well, I think the injuries that we had, you know, were, were, have already been reported. Jamal Williams was an ACL. Uh, Larke, uh, Emmanuel Larte, uh, concussion. Uh, and we had another one that uh, we lost for the year, for a for career. He took a medical red shirt. Uh, we announced that, didn't we? Uh, talking about Sheldon? Yeah, Sheldon. Yeah. Was it Sheldon? No, the, 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 the Brett. Um, who? If I can tell me who my, but my, I thought I lost a. Uh, oh, Karen. Karen. Well, Karen had the had the had the, had the uh, injury this summer. Before. No, there's one other one. Anyway, there's no there's no other significant injuries. Jamal Williams was the big one, and Larte, because they are in significant positions, you know, that we have right now. I don't have any other report of anybody unable to go first game. Have you worked out the latter half of that running back rotation yet? You were the, it was Lawrence. Lawrence, no, I have not, and I get it because I don't think it's uh, – uh, once we get down to this first game, it's, it's, it's a two-deep situation for until there's – until you get into a different you – know, until the game is out of reach one way or the other, it's a two-back it's a two -back rotation mostly, you know. And so he's talking about uh, uh, Quentin Hines who transferred in from Cincinnati and, 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 and uh, Hakeem Lawrence, the fr freshman from Miami, both kind of split in third – group at tailback. We had that, I think that story will play itself out and we'll know it. You'd like it to come about as, as you get into situations where you're giving them reps and you get and somebody makes a few more plays or do, does a few more things than the other one. I think corners. I think corners and safeties. I think you know your corners and safeties. Almost every time you hear us talk about them, you talk. They, we talk about a group. Anytime you hear a group, that's kind of there's the good and the bad. The group is you've got you've got guys that you can put in the game, dependable guys. Maybe you know maybe four corners and, and four safeties. But you like somebody to step up. You know somebody to stand out. Somebody to be better than. And so I think you're going to see a lot of that. Uh, a lot of those uh, people being rotated in and out, safeties and corners, until we find a guy that can, who, do we have a cover guy? Is this guy proven to be the big play guy, the safety that just reads the field well? And, and, and so I think there's some, some big question, not big question marks, but big, somebody step up and be the guy. And I also think a receiver. You know, I think a receiver. We, you know, we, we have, we've got, we, we play three or four wide outs. We've got to have two deep and almost three, three deep have to practice every day, 12 guys at a full wide out rotate. Uh, because of how much they run. And, and we have yet, based on last year's stats, we don't have a lot of guys that have a lot of, a lot of carries, but I'm waiting for, waiting for, you think it'd be Sconyers, uh, Sconyers or, or LT, who's come over the defense, you all have seen LT play, uh, or Sconyers or, or Marquell, Marquell, Marquello Sewell, Marquello Sewell, one of those guys, but you don't know. Yeah, I think, I think we need a go-to receiver to be the guy that steps up and, that in the game and just the bend when it comes on, get me the ball, get me the ball, that type of guy, you know. And uh, so that's that, that, that with receiver and secondary are the two areas where I think need, we need a step-up guy. You had three of those fifth-year seniors come in and, and win starting jobs. Um, Komak and, and Mangum along with Dalton Williams. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations for them collectively? 
you know, just to, to be uh, the, uh, to be unselfish leaders, to be unselfish leaders. To, I mean, they fought hard. We didn't necessarily give it to them. Um, they came in and earned their starting position. We tried to be real careful about what fifth-year people you bring in here because you don't want to mess up. You don't want to put them in a bad situation of not having a chance to be able to succeed, nor do you want to just give it to somebody and, and hurt the morale of your team. So all three of those came in and, and uh, uh, and uh, did a great job of of, um, of of earning a position. But I have challenged them because uh, the negative of any fifth-year guy who makes a transfer because he feels like he, maybe he could play in the NFL and, and he just wants a chance to start, well, I want a guy, one, that just wants us to have a winning season. I don't, I mean, if, I, I don't want to ever get to a selfish point where if the, 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 I want to make sure their their personal goals that they they become that they are totally accurate and 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 make every personal goal secondary to what's good for accurate. And uh, uh, I'm always pushing and making sure that 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 that's always got to be the the primary thing in their minds. But I expect them to just be good. You know, to line up and good like a fifth year guy, line up and be a good solid guy. And and uh, 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 and, and I guess I make those other comments. I had to, when you have 21 transfers at North Alabama, one year transfers because you're, <laughs> which I did. You you do that because one we lost every single starter, and they expected us to win 11 games that first year. But you you began to find out towards the end of the year, if a, a guy if a guy's returning kicks and and and, and it, it ain't a good return. He's blaming that offensive. Somebody's just ruined his chance to make it in the NFL by not blocking good enough. And he's more worried about that than how much pat those guys and lift them up. And I saw the, the realities of filling a full team with a bunch of junior college or transfers. It's not the way you go. We didn't go out looking for most of the guys that came to us anyway. You know, Dalton called me and Kobach wanted to, and, and uh, they all came looking. I think it was. I think these three are really fit in nicely. But you don't want to just you don't want a team full of full of different different guys. When it comes to uh, always preparing for a first game, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you know, you see us look at it accurate and know it's going to be different. Uh, are, so are they looking at North Alabama State <laughs> from last year? Is that what they're doing? And conversely, uh, do we find because, out? Because they have eight starters, they are seven or eight regulars mm -hmm. returning on defense, but they have a new coordinator and new Three new coaches there. over there. Yeah. So Everybody. And I've read their about. I read their articles. I read the Orlando Sentinel. I mean, or George is saying the same thing I'm saying. He's he studied Auburn. He studied North Alabama. He studied uh, different things from my coaches do. You know, uh, we've studied their defense from last year, which was a top ten. We've studied uh, Kent State from Jim from Jim when he was over there or here or um, uh, different things as well. You know, so we it's a guessing game always the first game. Because depending on how big that first game is, you can devote a lot of preseason to winning that first game. And you can be entirely different in your game plan than you had for the four or five films you know they're going to watch. So you want to be very fundamentally sound that first game. And so I think the first game, the most important thing, not is to find out every little thing you can find out, although we do that. You better take care of business and learn how not to lose the game. Be sewed up in your kicking game. Be able to execute the 15 or 20 offensive plays that you're going to run you better execute those plays against everything they see instead of having an answer to everything that's out there because that's not likely you're going to guess all these things right. And George O'Leary has been coaching a long time. He'll, he'll, he, will have, he will know that by experience. And I, uh, uh, and I feel the same way that, that we, we do. We look at every little thing, and not one of them do we know is necessarily the answer. Well, when, he, when Coach O'Leary looks at your depth chart and sees 12 wide receivers on there, he, he, he probably knows a little less well, if he don't know what we run, he ain't. Be, it's amazing to stay in his business long enough, you know. Now he also sees a lot of things else on our, our roster too. So I hope he prepares. I hope he prepares. Yeah, you know, we got tight ends, we got fullbacks, we got wide receivers. But, but he knows. We know he's got us four wide out offense, and he's got three go get it tailbacks too. And one of them is his returning guy that's a conference pick. One of them is a transfer from Miami. I know what he's got too. So power running game, and he's got a four wide out spread offense, and he's got a quarterback that now plays wide receiver that they tried some at Wildcat. So, I mean, everybody they're going to do their homework, you know, on that. But, you know, um, but uh, everything's different. You know, four wide out offense, and you, you, you can't compare uh, SMU to Oregon. Any, they're both four wide out, but you can't compare the two off. They're just different night and day. You know, one's a spread run, one's a spread. You know, Rich Rodriguez is one type of thing. So, anyway, we all have to do a little guessing game. And, 
And, and, and on top of that, I'm not sure we know exactly what our strengths are going to be totally until they happen. Coach, you made uh, some switches on the offensive defensive line, move Weiss from center outside. How do those two groups work right now? Well, offensive line, I think we did. We, the offensive defensive line are the two we lack the depth that we need. It'll hurt the defensive line more if we get into trouble because they don't have, they have to have, they have to substitute twice as much offensive line because they run a lot farther every play. Uh, offensively, I really like our front five, our starting five, six, or seven guys. Vice was a critical uh, move for us because he's a bigger bodied guy and we put him out there at tackle. But with, uh, with, uh, Schweitzer and uh, and Rizzo, you've got some guys that have, that have played that are almost as big, but not quite, and that gives us uh, puts it, it it puts bodies in a better position. But it really allowed us to really put the five best guys on the field at the same time, and so I, I literally like our, our our starting lineup in the offensive line and a couple of backups, but most of the others aren't ready to play yet. You know, we don't have ten, we don't have one a backup at every position that are ready to play college football quite yet. Um, but that's been a bison's that's been a big move for us to be able to put him out there uh, uh, on, on offense, you know, and just like defensively, I mean, being able to move up uh, uh, Capone into a tackle and JD outside with Presley and move Capone in because he's such a, a blue collar, hard nosed, you know, uh, high, high energy guy. Move him in there with uh, Isaac Williams, Isaiah Williams, and uh, uh, inside it's not the biggest front but they, they, they it's but the moves have been good for us even though you got a late start recruiting it looks like you're pretty pleased with these young kids you brought in well, yeah I am I mean I mean I think we've got um, we've got guys that'll help us um, in this crew in this group I'm real pleased with the with the, with the from the junior, from the group that were originally scheduled to come in before as we got in, there were six or seven junior college or prep school transfers that came in in January, like Presley and some of those guys have really been added added to us that really nicely, and then some of our freshmen like Connor Hundley has really been the biggest surprise of, to me of the team uh, in the fact that not only I knew how tough he was, how smart he was, and how well coached at, at St. X. Uh, but how ready to play? He, he's really, he's really got a guy. He's shown us some nice things as our backup tailback right now. I'm really pleased with him. And then, you know, uh, uh, Pratt from Green is going to be a nice backup. Uh, Monty Davis at wide out. And, uh, Hakeem offense stops people like that. The defensively Horner from Miami Lauderdale area, Miami area uh, at, at, at defensive end has really stepped up and, and as a freshman and come on real, real well. Uh, at the fresh position, as well as Jatavius Brown, some of the backups there. So I, I really love. I mean, I think the ones that we got, we're real pleased with. Uh, they'll be able to help us. What's the track uh, you see for uh, Jermaine Turner? Uh, for who? Jermaine Turner. Jamel? Jamel Jamel Turner. Jamel Turner from yeah. the one that said originally signed with the highest. Boy, I tell you, he's very talented. It's like he's been away from a organized, really organized football because he missed a year or so. Then he went to a junior college and was there only through spring. Uh, and uh, but when we in the last couple of scrimmages, when he's just been kind of just it was like the, just line up and play football. He really had made some huge plays. So I think he's going to be. I, I think I think this year will be a. a, 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 a we'll wait and see for us to see how how fast he can develop and and and. Uh, if there's a need to have him in there in a rotation. But I see, I see a bright, bright future for him. He's just a very talented guy that's probably been 220 sometimes in his past. He's probably about 205 pounds. Uh, but uh, he does have the ability to make things happen. I was really Did pleased. He um, he's got four years. I don't, and I'm not sure exactly. I don't think I can tell you honestly without checking with my compliance if he would count as a red shirt or if his red shirt's already been counted to give him four. Yeah. I think that's the way that he comes in as a have four to get four. He's so he if he does if he, we're gonna we're not gonna hold him back for a red shirt. We're not gonna hold him back for a red shirt. I think so. I think if he can, if he stays, you know, doesn't get discouraged. You know, we gotta keep his head up. He he's gotta keep his head up and not not get discouraged if he's running a little scout team while doing other things. But defensively, I promise you, because of the the depth, you'll see some you'll see some strange match, matchups you weren't ready for because just having to get people that can play that. Uh, any people that uh, can give us some depth at a, for a few plays that can run around and do some things. From the end of spring ball till the day, what's been the biggest improvement or surprise? Spring ball till the day. Um, 
and, and I, 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 again, I keep focusing on just the the, the fact that our team has uh, uh, not lost faith in what we're doing and the way we're doing it. There's there's I haven't had haven't had a lot of guys jump off the ship and say you know or, or, or challenge me or our coaches and end up having to remove guys from the team or they just don't buy into it. It's been a real. I think we've had we've had the team. The biggest thing I think is just the way. Everyone seems to have collectively bought in and and uh, and uh, believe in each other and believe in what we're doing. Obviously, change you got to run here. You got to change the culture, mindset, and attitude a little bit. How do you take that from the practice field where they're buying into the yeah. team? They continue it week to week. Other than one. You know, I'm gonna say this. I, I, whatever the I know what the, the culture's changed. I mean, I believe our believe our players believe they're going to win. They believe they've changed now. Now they may have to. They may hit a huge road, but they, that we may now have to go to phase two. How to do, how to handle adversity, how to how to find out how difficult things happen while you're winning. But I believe in our in our players' minds, uh, they, they it's changed. Uh, now we've got to go through a game and see, make sure it's there. Uh, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, I've seen the positive the, the positive changes that I need to see. D does that mean you're going to win your first game and, and knock off Central Florida? Uh, does it mean you're going to turn this whole thing around? I, you know, I don't. I don't know that that's how that's going to happen. But I'm just saying is I I I, I believe the culture change. If this was a dead gum, uh, if we were playing a cup a cupcake team, we paid to buy in here and we beat them by 30, you'd probably think it was already changed completely. And that's how. It, but that would just be the fact that we were playing a team that was less than us. I believe the culture's changed. I just don't know if it's going to mean we're going to go out there and upset UCF first game, or it's going to be a gradual process. Uh, but I believe these players, these players are practicing like winners. They're not practicing like losers.